It's rejoice in the Lord always. And, you know. Just do it, right? Just rejoice. Just I mean, do it. Just know. rejoice. It's a choice, right? We have a choice to make. That is great. Let's see, I'm getting a little echo on this. Right, I wonder which one mine is. I, I can't ever remember. Chord, reverb. Oh, yeah. There we go. Um, we've got two different stations here, and I can't ever remember when, which one goes to me and which one goes to you. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll tell you, we've been experiencing the breath of God today. Have you, have you, can you feel the breath of God? Jesus. The breath of God is the Holy Spirit of God. It's amazing. And the breath of God has been working. Did you know the breath of God provides healing? It provides really wonderful healing. And boy, we've seen it. Betty, supernatural healing. Amen. No surgery. Woo. The doctor said just let it heal. She's been careful. She's been listening to the Lord. She's been 65 days without sleeping in her bed. You know, but she's still able to sleep in that recliner, right? And see, man, you use the wisdom of the Lord and the, the healing power, the breath of God. Hallelujah. Nancy, I remember when Nancy told me she would never walk again. She's been walking. How many days a week do you try to walk? Three days. Three days a week. She, she's been too busy to walk lately, though. She's got a busy, busy life. But we're going to pray that she gets back to walking again. That's right, because you got to do that, right? Yeah. You bet. It's just really neat to see God working, healing. <laughs> I remember when Herb was pretty sick, you know. He's just looking stronger and stronger all the time. You bet. Oh, I'm telling you. Carmen, have you got a praise for us in health? Because I remember you were pretty weak a little ways back. I get some shots on Monday. Oh, praise the Lord for shots, right? That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. to help my knees. Okay. Yes, so that's a knee problem. And those shots do help, right? Well... Well, shots in the knee really help her fingers, too, don't you think? I mean, she can play a lot better when her knees are, are well. <laughs> it's just amazing to see what God does. You getting your shots? Oh, he gets his distemper and rabies shots. Boy, I'm glad he does, too, aren't you? As wild as he is uh, with those shots, I can't imagine what he would be like without it. <laughs> God is just so good, isn't he? Heavenly Father, we're thanking you, we're praising you, we're rejoicing in the Lord always, and we have every reason to rejoice, Father, as we really think about it. We know we have struggles that we go through, difficulties that we face, but when we really think about it, we have so much to rejoice in, so many reasons to praise your name. Thank you so much for answering prayer for us. We just rejoice in that. We know that you're with us always, always providing for us. As you promised, you said you would supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So we thank you and praise you. We ask you to just bless our time together as we look in the Word tonight. Father, we're so dependent upon your Word and the power of the Holy Spirit as He reveals the truth of the Word of God to us. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you know, as we get older, we realize more and more how important breath is, right? <laughs> it gets harder and harder to breathe sometimes as we get older, and we struggle a little bit more going up those stairs and stuff like that. Uh, so breath is very important, and even when you're younger, you know, you're out there playing football, or you, you just fall uh, sometimes, you hit real hard, and all of a sudden you, you, you get the breath knocked out of you, right? Yep. Frank, have you ever been there? I've been there. <laughs> I thought you probably as athletic as you've been. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he's ever had the breath knocked out of him while he's playing golf or tennis, but uh, probably, maybe falling skiing or something like that, you know. <laughs> but it's it's a weird feeling, isn't it, when you can't breathe? Yeah. It's such a weird feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, that is so crazy. You see these guys on the football field, sometimes, you know, they, they're just laying there after they, boom, hit the ground, and, and they're just laying there for a while, and they, they run the team out there, and you say, yeah, I think he just, I think he just got the breath knocked out of him, but it's a really weird feeling. We depend so much on breath, and God says that he is the breath. He is the breath. We see that Jesus breathed into Adam the breath of life in the very beginning, right? Adam was nothing. He was dust. We were talking about this at church the other day, and I asked the people, I said, do you, do you see anything interesting about that verse? They said, yeah, God made Adam out of dust. It wasn't mud. Don't you think it would be a little easier to shape something out of mud or clay? How do you shape something out of dust? God can do it. 
I can do it. He shaped Adam out of dust, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. Uh, after his resurrection, Jesus appeared to the disciples, and he, he, he breathed on them. He breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. I know, uh, you know, Roy loves that expression, Holy Ghost. <laughs> when he was a kid, he, he said that scared him to death to hear somebody talking about the Holy Ghost. Uh, the modern translations all say the Holy Spirit. That's probably a little bit better. But, um, yeah, this Holy Spirit, the breath of God. Let's take a look at it. In the Old Testament, it's Ruach. That's Hebrew. And in the New Testament, it's Numa. And they're both times they're translated spirit sometimes. They're translated breath sometimes. They're translated wind sometimes. And I really do, when it says the Holy Spirit, I quite often like to just replace it with the holy breath of God because it's just, it's just so mystical, so beautiful, the holy breath of God. I think one of the problems with calling it the holy breath of God is it doesn't seem like a person, right? It just seems like a kind of a force of nature, and we know the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is one of the, one of the persons of the Godhead, part of the triumph God. But this holy breath of God is a person. It is the Holy Spirit of God. And uh, so I like to think about this in those terms, that the Holy Spirit of God is just like the breath of God. And look at what we see in 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is God-breathed. And that word in Greek is theonustros. Can you see God breathed in that? Theo is God. Neustros comes from pneuma. God breathed. It's much more literal to say God breathed. And that's how powerful the Word of God is. It is the breath of God being made manifest in the writers of the Scriptures. It was breathed out by God. And therefore, it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. It's, it's what we are so dependent upon. We, we just need to be uh, have this foundation of understanding in the Word of God. But look at the, that's the NIV, that's the New Modern Translation. And in the New King James Version, which is probably what most of us memorized, it says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, that's a little bit of a misconception. It's not as literally true, is it? Theonustros is God breathed. And here they've translated the inspiration of God. The problem with that is it makes it sound like the apostles were inspired, that it, that it really came from them. You know, that they, were, they had this moment of inspiration, and so they wrote the, the Word of God. That's a little bit different than God breathed, don't you think? God breathed comes straight from God, Whereas inspiration means like, oh, they were just kind of a natural phenomenon that took within them. They were inspired uh, to write the scriptures. So uh, I think that's really an unfortunate uh, translation. And R.C. Sproul said something very interesting. He said it would have been really better if they had said all scripture is given by expiration of God. <laughs> He wasn't, uh, you know, he was breathing out. He, these people were, the, the, the apostles were breathing in the Holy Spirit of God, but he, it wasn't uh, inspiration, it was really expiration. He was breathing out the very Word of God. Now, I find that very interesting. I just love to look at those words and the, comparing the different uh, words that are translated uh, in these different versions of the Scriptures. But in John chapter 3, it really comes into play because... Jesus talks to Nicodemus. He says, flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit, the pneuma, gives birth to spirit. He says, only the spirit can give birth to spirit. He says, flesh gives birth to flesh. Now, that's just pretty clear, isn't it? He says, when you're born as a baby, you don't get the Holy Spirit of God. <laughs> he says, that's a different birth. That's a different thing. The spirit is the only one that can give birth to the spirit. So he says being born of the flesh, just born in the, into this physical world, is not going to really give you what God wants you to have. He says it gives birth to the Spirit. He said you should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. He tells Nicodemus, just being physically born is not going to get you to heaven. You, the only way to go to heaven is to be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> to have the Holy Spirit of God breathe into you, have His breath come into you. It's the power of the Holy Spirit in us that makes us a new creation in Christ. We become like God because He's living within us. He's breathing His breath in us 
And we learn as we go through life to become more and more in submission to the Holy Spirit of God. He goes on to say the wind or the spirit, uh, the breath blows wherever it pleases. Don't try to tell the Holy Spirit what to do. Did you know it? <laughs> you better let the Holy Spirit do what he wants to do because he's going to do it anyway. Don't fight the Holy Spirit. You can't control the Holy Spirit any more than you can control the wind. But wouldn't we love to sometimes control the wind? I know John was. I keep telling her, uh, I say, man, Oklahoma's not all that windy. She said, yes, it is. It's the most windy place in the world. I've never been any place more windy. I said, oh, man, I remember times in Houston when it was blowing a lot harder. But, uh, you know, you can't control the wind. That's why we have all these weather people on trying to tell you, where is it going to come from tomorrow? You know, we can predict some things about where it's going to blow because you know where the high pressures are and the low pressures are and stuff like that, but you can't tell the wind what to do. No, he says, God, the Holy Spirit is just like that. It's just like that. It is a force. It is the force of creation, actually. The force that creates. And it is God, the Holy Spirit of God. He is God. He blows wherever He pleases. Man, if we can get in touch with the Holy Spirit and go wherever He's go, don't you know you're going to be blessed? That is the secret to being blessed, is to sense where the Holy Spirit of God is going, sense where the wind is blowing. Go with it. It's a whole lot easier than going against the wind. Did you know that? I remember going to Fort Hood, and uh, I, I joined the Army as a dentist, and I had no idea they were going to make me run two miles every six months, you know. So I get to Fort Hood, and the first thing they do is, say, well, it's time for you to do your PT test. You've got to do your PT test. I had to go out to the track, you know, and had to run two miles, and I never had run before. I never was in athletics before or anything like that, so they just put me out there, and the wind was 40 miles an hour. I could do real well going one direction, <laughs> but the other direction, I was like standing still. You know, you just don't want to have to go against the wind. Go with the wind. He's going to go where he wants to go. Go with the Holy Spirit of God. Sense where the wind is blowing. Go with the Holy Spirit. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it's going. You know, you really can't see the wind. You can see the effect of it, though, can't you? You can see the, the leaves and limbs blowing. Uh, you can hear the sound against the house. I know in my house when the wind is blowing, something goes knock. I don't know what it is. I've tried to look for it. Knock. Knock. Something's banging against a wall somewhere. I don't know. I've gotten used to it. <laughs> I have no idea what it is. But I can hear the effect of the wind, but I, I sure can't see the wind. The Holy Spirit of God is just mysterious that same way. It's very mysterious. You can't see it. You can't pin it down. You can't just define it completely. He's so mysterious, and we have to really be open all the time. Open all the time, sensing, listening, learning. Holy Spirit, God, where are you going? Where do you want me to go? I want to go with you today. That's one of our primary objectives in life, to go with the Holy Spirit of God. He says, where it comes from, where it goes, so it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Everyone that's born of the Spirit it's going to be a little bit mysterious. Did you know that? Because uh, the world will look at people that are born of the Spirit. They're born of the Holy Spirit of God. And they look at it and say, those people are a little bit weird. You know it? <laughs> because when you're born of the Holy Spirit of God, the world is going to look at you and say, why did you do that? You know? And you might be saying, well, you know, I just can't really take it. I can't really sell a product where I'm going to have to lie. And to me, that's lying. You know, maybe, maybe it's legal. Maybe it's somebody else uh, could do it and it wouldn't, they wouldn't get in trouble for it. But when you've got the Holy Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God may say, no, you can't do that. You just can't do that in good conscience. You have to say, no, I'm not going to compromise on that. You know, I remember when I was young, uh, you hardly even think about it anymore, but every once in a while in movies, they would have cuss words. <laughs> every once in a while. <laughs> And, you know, I would say, how can those actors do that? You know, what kind of an actor, what kind of person would actually do that? I remember I always loved Michael J. Fox. And I, I, I thought he was really great. But, you know, whenever he would do these, uh, these movies about the, oh, the future, back to the future and all that kind of stuff, and, and he would be cussing in there and say, I wonder why he would do that. You know, why would he compromise on that? And, you know... He's made a lot of money, right? <laughs> so the world would say, why wouldn't you do it? 
Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you just compromise? Look at the money you can make. What's, what's wrong with a little cuss word here and there? But the Holy Spirit might say, no, you can't do that. You can't compromise that way. You were called to be holy. You were called to be pure. You were not called to compromise for the sake of money. God says, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to compromise. You will not have to compromise. The Holy Spirit of God is right there. You've got to follow the Holy Spirit of God. And the world's going to say, you're a little bit weird. But you know what? God says, you're going to have a great reward. There's a great reward coming for people who refuse to compromise and who are willing to say, Holy Spirit, wherever you go, wherever the breath of God is going, that's where I want to go. Well, as we look at Genesis, I talked about it a minute ago, where God, Jesus blew into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. It says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Well, we know when that happened, immediately Adam received physical life. His eyes opened. His heart started beating. That's the power of creation, isn't it? <laughs> the breath of God creating this incredible, amazing power to create out of nothing. There was no life there. All of a sudden, the breath of God creates life. His eyes open. His heart starts beating. But you know what's, what else happened? Really, really important. He received spiritual life. He received peace and joy. That's the spiritual life. That's the blessing of the Holy Spirit, really, is the peace and the joy that God gives. That's spiritual life. John said that Jesus was the Word of God. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The life that comes from the Holy Spirit of God, the life that comes from the breath of Jesus Christ, is what gives us peace and joy. And man, I'm more and more convinced every day, that's what this world is looking for. You know, when you see the compromises that you see, the political things going on, we prayed for them, we say, who in their right mind can't see that they're going in the wrong direction? But they're, they're blinded to the truth. And you know why? They keep searching and searching for answers that are not real answers. They create more problems than they do solutions. And it's, it's because they don't have peace and joy. If they had the peace and the joy of Jesus Christ, I guarantee you, that's what motivates you to live a righteous life. People who have peace and joy, they live a righteous life. You know why? Because... If you grieve the Holy Spirit of God, you lose the peace and the joy. You can let your peace direct you in your life. It's the peace that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's so powerful. It can actually direct you in your life. You can sense whether you're going in the right direction or not. So Jesus is the life giver. He's the one who gives this peace and that joy that the world is craving so much. When we get saved, we get born again. We get born again. When we get saved, something phenomenal happens. That Holy Spirit, the breath of God comes into us. And that's when we start receiving this peace and this joy that the world is craving. We should thank the Lord every day for that peace and that joy. Praise the Lord for that peace and that joy. And value it. Value it. I mean, realize that you cannot allow anything to compromise that peace and that joy. When you start sensing that peace and joy leaving from you, start praying. Start saying, Lord, I don't want to compromise that peace and joy. I need that peace and joy more than anything else. Peace and joy comes from the breath of God, the breath of the Holy Spirit. Man, I'll tell you, if you witness, if you, if you uh, actually minister to people, you see so many people who, and I see it right here in this room, in this room, people who suffer from various physical ailments, but they have peace and they have joy. That's, that's a supernatural thing. That's not natural, is it? It's not natural to have peace and joy when, you're, when your body is hurting, but you can. And those who minister, they see people who leave this life. They take their last breath, and as they're taking their last breath, they're praising the Lord. They have peace they have joy. That's a huge blessing. I went to a funeral yesterday of Jan Fisher. I've known her, you know, since I was, since I was probably 18, 20 years old. And uh, what, a, what a testimony. She played, the, she played the piano for the First Baptist Church of Cash ever since she was in high school. And, and she could play that piano, too. She, she loved the Western style, you know, kind of a Western style for um, 
uh, just a closer walk with the uh, mansion over the hilltop, uh, all, all those great old songs, and she could really make that piano go. But her main saying all through her life is, God is bigger. Whatever happened, whatever would happen, her saying, God is bigger. She lived that way. She lived that way, believing God is bigger. And you know, when she took her last breath, she's, she was 68 years old, still pretty young, right? Wow. 68 wow. years old, she had her cancer, came back again. Amen. And, uh, and we, as she was leaving this life, the last thing she said, always remember, God is bigger. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what she lived by. God is bigger. Yes. He's bigger than anything that we could possibly ever face. That gives me chills right now as I think about it. Amazing. Yes. That peace, that joy, you can't, you can't buy it. There's nothing you can do to buy it. Money can't buy it. No, it's something God gives as a gift to those who believe in Jesus Christ. So when Adam and Eve sinned, of course, they lost that peace and that joy. And they, their physical life changed also because all of a sudden their physical life became temporary. They began to realize that they would die someday. So death came upon them in a physical sense, but immediately they lost the peace and the joy. Why else would they run and hide? They were afraid of God. They lost that peace and that joy, but they had to step out in faith, believing in Jesus Christ. When He called them, when He called upon them, they stepped out in faith. They said, I believe I can trust Him. They heard His voice, right? The breath of God came upon them. They sensed in themselves, yes, I can trust him. They stepped out, and you know what he did? He made garments for them. It says, the Lord God made garments of skin for Adam and his wife, and, and he clothed them. We today, when we believe in Jesus Christ, we're clothed with the righteousness of Christ. Right. When God looks at us, he sees our clothing. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he sees our clothing. It's the righteousness of Christ, clothed in righteousness. And that's why the Holy Spirit of God can live in us. That's why the Holy Spirit can come to live within us because when God looks at us, He sees the righteousness of Christ. We're clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Man, that's beautiful clothing, isn't it? Again, you can't buy it. It's something that God gives to those who believe in Jesus Christ and that's what makes it possible for the Holy Spirit to come in. How, how does it happen? Simple faith. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's life. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. If you don't have Jesus, you're walking in darkness. You don't have any light. No wonder people are depressed. No wonder people are looking for exotic solutions that don't make any sense. They don't have light. They're walking in darkness. They need the light of Jesus Christ. It comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners, to bring the light to us. And guess what? It's just beautiful, His attitude. God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't come down here to condemn people. We were already condemned, weren't we? We were already condemned. He said, those people are condemned. They don't have any chance. They don't have any hope. He says, I can give them hope. I can fill them with the peace and the joy of God that will sustain them throughout their lifetime and they will be carried forever into the glory of heaven, into the presence of the Lord. Everlasting life. They will not perish. He didn't come to condemn people. He came to save people. He came that they might be saved. That's the heart of God. That's the heart of God. Do you think God is angry? I don't think so. I don't think God is angry. And I've heard people say, well, look at uh, Isaiah. Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up, sitting upon a throne, and, and he fell down trembling before God. I'm a man of unclean lips. You know, and I, I live in a generation of unclean lips. I'm unholy. I'm unrighteous. He was, he was afraid of God. But what did God do? God says, I'm going to heal your lips. He wasn't judging Isaiah. He was calling Isaiah. <laughs> He was calling and he said, Isaiah, I've got something important for you to do. I'm going to make it possible for you to do it. I'm going to, you do have unclean lips. You have every reason to be afraid because you see your unrighteousness. But he says, I'm not going to let that stand in the way. I'm going to make you righteous. I'm going to cleanse your lips. I'm going to make you a servant of God. I'm going to give you a message that will change the world. You'll be amazed. And really, I'm amazed when I read Isaiah. The, the, the revelation that he received. Wow. 
God cleansed his lips, cleansed his heart, made him a, a vessel of God, a vessel of the breath of God. As he spoke, the breath of God was going out from him. As he wrote, the breath of God going out, and we are the beneficiaries of it. The Word of God is so powerful. It's alive. It's the breath of God. Praise the Lord. Well, I hope you'll just be encouraged by that. You have the breath of God. God has breathed into you the breath of life. You have everlasting life. You have peace. You have joy that will sustain you in every situation. You have the blessing of God upon your life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this blessing. You're a God of great blessing. You loved us even when we were your enemies. You weren't mad at us. You were just looking for ways to save us. And you had a perfect plan all along from the very beginning. You knew that we would be born in rebellion against you, but you had a perfect plan to save us. You sent Jesus Christ into this world to live a perfect life, to die on the cross of Calvary, to be raised from the dead, to send the Holy Spirit of God to live within us. We just pray, Father, that as we live our lives day by day, that you would breathe upon us the breath of the Holy Spirit of God. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen, brother. Let's just give the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Father, for this. Amen. Yes. I want to tell you guys that, that uh, I just want to tell you this. This is kind of a uh, not a downer, but our drummer at our church was killed. Uh, and it, well, it was a, a while back. But I just want to tell you that I love you guys. Before we leave, we need to tell somebody that looks like they need to be told that I love you. I appreciate you. Because he was just getting his mail at the post office. Somebody had a, had a, had a, uh, oh, a seizure and lost control of their pickup, ran, ran off, crossed the road and over and slammed him into the post office building. This was in Fort Cobb. Yes, I remember. Remember? And so I just think about him because nothing's sure in this earth uh -huh. except him. Except him. Amen? So I don't mean a downer story. But I just want to make sure there's an old, there's a song, and have I told you lately that I love you? We're not going to sing that, but it's, have, have I told you lately that I love you? Oh, and that I care? Everyone in here is so, so important. I can't emphasize that. So before I leave, uh, I've got a, just a few minutes. There's an old song. Just receive this, if you would. Breathe on me. Breathe on me, Holy Spirit, breathe on me, take thou my heart, cleanse every part, Holy Spirit. We sing that as a prayer if you wish. You know what I love about God? You can't do any more or any less for His love. You can't perform. You can't jump through hoops. You can't. He loves you just as much. If you never worship Him, He loves you. Amen? So I'm just going to ask the Holy Spirit to come. It's okay. Breathe on me. Receive from the Holy Spirit. We receive your Spirit, Lord. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Take thou my heart.
bless you all. Happy birthday, Ed. Everybody, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Yes. Yes. If we don't see you next week for some reason or the other, we'll see you up there. There's a great big tree right by the big gate, and I'll, I'll meet you guys there. We'll go fishing. <laughs> or we'll play golf, whatever y'all want to do. Yeah. That's right. Bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. Be encouraged. Amen. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, David. Thank you so much. Oh, praise the Lord.